It's been so long since I posted, and man, I miss you guys! Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy! And I got some incredible, incredible news. The first official Trift Gaming mat on the Trift Gaming shop. Here it is, boys. <laughs> I am Endymion, the Iron Man Mighty Master. Six counters for the six Infinity Stones. Let's go, baby. Such a beautiful mat. I believe we're only selling 50 of it. Uh, so it is a limited time offer. Pre-orders right now in the description below. And the first 10 to pick up this beautiful mat is going to get an exclusive. There's only going to be 10 ever made for this one. Trip Gaming Token. In the description below. $5 shipping to US and Canada, $10 shipping internationally. Or 30 USD for a small, uh, for one player mat, 45 USD for a big uh, two player mat. Link in the description in my PayPal. Go check it out. Now, onto the video that we're talking about. Welcome back to the channel, man. Honestly, it's been so long, but we're gonna be doing it in my updated Pendulum Deck Profile Sloth Turbo. The deck's absolutely insane. Uh, I've had success with it playing in real life, but not in tournaments. I don't know, like real tournaments. I don't know why. I'll be crushing everyone out of uh, at, like locals, but then I'll, I'll, London, I did terribly. Now it's okay. Uh, stuff like that is gonna happen. All my losses were. I started out hot, 4-0 at London, and then I ended up losing to decks that aren't even meta decks. So I crushed every meta deck. I was undefeated against every meta deck throughout the tournament, and then uh, I lost against shit decks like Cyber Dragon. Anyways. With that being said, the deck's absolutely amazing. So go check it out right now. Uh, it's going to blow your mind. The deck's insane. So consistent. Uh, you're playing 30 cards, 10 draw cards. I'll talk about everything in depth for you guys. And hey, hit the subscribe button. It's been a while. So without further ado, let's go. A Morbid Sloth Turbo, baby. Let's go. Every hand looks like this. I'm going to show you guys just exactly how to do it. The deck is absolutely insane. Going first or second. Going first, you put up this board. Every single hand going second, you clear their board and end on a sloth and say, good luck, have fun negating a, a spell card if you're facing Thunder, the spell engrave, or negating a, depending on the matchup, Gizmek or whatever it may be, to make sure they cannot attack over the sloth. And this meta, sloth is, an, is absolutely an FTK as long as you could stop your opponent from their one way to beat it. Salaman, great summon, Jaguar, spinny effect, negate, scoop. So there's lots of ways to do this board. I'm going to show you guys the deck profile first, and then a common tutorial at the very end. And honestly, if you play this deck perfectly, man, you are not losing a single game. Every single one of my losses in the uh, to London were literally just to myself. Uh, but if played perfectly, you, you absolutely win every single game. And it's not about playing the deck perfectly. It's about knowing your matchups. And honest overconfidence has always been my downfall. I would face against decks like Cyber Dragons and not give them the time of day. And then make a misplay against that deck, not knowing what to negate, etc. But you do have to... Give respect to all decks you face, and if you do, you will destroy every deck. Anyways, without further ado, hit the subscribe button! And let's go into one of my favorite decks I've ever played in a very long time. And honestly, this is an incredible time. I'll, I'll throw it locals, I just destroy everyone. And I can't wait for Pasadena to, to destroy absolutely everyone. So, with that being said, check out those mats. I'll talk about in the beginning of the video. Absolutely amazing. Uh, they're gonna look like this. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mats. Mighty Master, I am in Demion. Six counters, let's go, baby. This is the deck profile. First and foremost, Amorphic Slot. This card is not a brick. If you draw it, you simply put it as your low scale. It's all good. And what it does, it says your opponent cannot play Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm down to play one card in my deck that if I draw it to scale, it's a literally worst case scenario it becomes Purple Poison. In worst case scenario, you draw it's Purple Poison, put it in scale, big deal, it's a scale. And if you it's in your deck, you summon it. If it's not in your, if you draw it, you summon it. It's just an auto win with protected, not at zero attack. It's auto it's auto win when it's twenty two fifty attack in this format. There's no sky circus anymore, even though they won, but big deal. All right, let's go. So the the core of the deck. Okay, you're playing a bunch of spells as normal. It's servant turbo that brings out the sloth. Uh, so why not play abductor as well? So abductor and servant, I've been saying for a very long time, are absolutely remarkable. Servant, obviously, but not many of you play abductor. Paul Cooper plays Abducted, which is why I did message him and said, you know what, Paul, thank you to you for actually having a brain, uh, someone who actually speaks my language. Abductor is an amazing card. At uh, YCS London, I was going on the fence with Jake Quincy and Gabriel Susi for the entire time, and they should have seen me the, the last day of the, 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 the day before the event, we were testing until like 5 a.m., and I, was, I kept putting up Abductor and Reflection back and forth between my deck, and thinking, you know, what should I play, what should I play? And they kept saying, oh, you don't play whatever your heart tells you. For some reason, I was like, Abductor was what I knew I should have played, but I played three Reflection over three Abductor instead, thinking of the prowess of it going second, and uh, that ended up costing me. Reflection would stay in the scale with eight, 10 counters, 
Whereas if that was an abductor, you get a free plus one, which gets you the turbo card to make Electrum or a Dark Worm or a Servant, depending on the situation, or a Sloth or a Luckery, which I'll talk about in the side deck. But these are insane. If you're playing a deck revolved around Servant, if you don't draw Servant, you need more cards to get the plus off it. So Abductor is not a brick. It literally is a plus one. So it's a pseudo Servant for you and your deck revolves around them. So if you don't open these or Mastery, it's just uh, super subpar if you build your deck around it with the 22 spells, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. Next, uh, these cards, absolutely mandatory. Same with this card, Curtain Razor. Not many of you play Curtain Razor. I don't know why. A lot of you choose to play Black Fang or Purple Poison or Harmonizing. Har Curtain Razor is even better than Harmonizing Magician. What you guys don't understand is that you, if you don't make Electrum before your pen summon, you just lose going first or going second. Not lose, you can still do stuff. But against Interruptions, you're, you're going to have a very bad time, especially if Electrum gets Impermanence, whatever it may be. You need to put monsters on board and you need spell cards. They are not just turbo cards. But they put spell cards for what your whole deck is revolved around, which is these two. So you need all the cards possible that are spell cards and a turbo card and scales at the same time. So it doesn't just put itself a monster for Electrum. It's not just a spell card, but it's also high scales, which the deck is lacking. That's why you must play three Curtain Razor. After siding, you could side out one or two if you want, but uh, you do need them, man. I'm telling you right now. Next, three Dark Worm. You're not playing Blue Boy in here, so you do want a normal summon. Dark Worm is your normal summon, along with Time Gazer. None of these cards are bricks, by the way. Time Gazer is not a brick. This is your, these are your normal summons of your deck. If you normal if you draw Time Gazer going second, it's great because it stops the Twin Twisters, the Titan, it stops them from raging your scales, etc. It is not a brick going second. Going first, it is a brick because no one plays Ghost Ogre anymore, but it's fine. Going first, you auto win anyways. But these are your normal summons of the deck. Dark Worm is a plus one, but this protects your scales going second, which is vital. As you see so far, are there any bricks in this deck? No. Like, not whatsoever. Like, the worst cards in the deck so far are these two, which uh, are big, the big deal. Protects your scales, scale. And everything else does something. Everything else, I said, is a plus one or a spell card. Or it puts a monster on board. So, there, like, there's no actual bricks in this deck. Like, there's no magicians that do nothing. All these cards do something with an idea in mind. Next, two Mighty Master, two Jackal. These are your negates of the deck. You, I, I, Of course, I would love to play three. There's a lot of times where I miss a third Mighty Master, but you don't want to risk bricking on it. And honestly, the deck is so damn consistent and turbo orientated that there's no reason whatsoever uh, to play a third of any of these because you always have a bunch of negates and it's always so consistent. You don't want to screw up your consistency. If you, t if you shuffle up the deck 20 times, uh, 19 out of them will have... The board I showed you, and the 20th will have minus a Mighty Master, but still have Sloth Apple lose a Jackal or something along those lines. Next, one Reflection. Uh, I played three before because it's Prowess going second, but it's more so just there to send off Electrum or to Special Off Servant. It's a It gets rid of a back row or a monster problem, whatever one problem there is, and attacking into it, uh, crashing is, a, uh, is relevant. And you want another level 7 in the deck to make Absolute Vortex uh, easier. Sometimes, even going second, sometimes I search Reflection with Mastery. Next, one Eccentric. Also a gigantic, gigantic, gigantic reason why I play Abductor. So what people don't understand is, uh, look at the meta right now. The only way Thunder's beating you is if they have a Super Poly set. The only way Salamanger's beating you is if they have like a bunch of traps for you. Well, you just search the one problem and you destroy it. it it's that simple. Or, again, even Orcus. A lot of times, and most of the times, if they're a good player, they end an IP and Babel. Well, you just pop the Babel, they're not going to be able to respond to it. Because the second you activate a center, what are they going to do? Send out the gear switches to pop one card? Good, you already won. Fantastic, thank you. Like, it's there, it puts on so much pressure going second, it's insane. And the fact that it's searchable by your by four cards, uh, it's amazing. Like, it's just absolutely remarkable. Going first, I side out, just so you guys know the siding uh, idea. You side out these two going first, because going first, you don't need them at all. You only need them for going second. And I'll show you what you side them out for in my side deck. There's a specific slots in there to take these two out to make the deck more consistent. But overall, those are uh, plus one gate zero. It's fine. It's just a scale. But of course, you don't want to draw it. But if you look at all those cards, of mo there are 22 in there. 16 of them are, six of them are spells. Uh, so let's go into the spells now. Three mastery, three of everything, okay? So I know a lot of you don't want to see a second master. If you're going to play three desires, by the way. Uh, if you're going to play two Desires because you're scared of, of drawing a second, the same logic says play two Mastery. So why the hell would you t play a two of one of your best cards in your deck? Even if you don't resolve it twice, it doesn't matter. You, you just auto-win for you. Uh, next, one Foolish, two Shine. If you notice, there's no Distrudo in here. It's the most consistent list possible. I don't want any cards that brick. And there's no place for Distrudo if the end board is just going to have a Sloth and LP. What's the Distrudo going to do? The LP is bringing out Sloth. The LP is not bringing out Distrudo. I'll show you the combo at the end. 
You basically put up Appaloosa, Jocko, Mighty Master, and then you drop an LP after the Appaloosa to summon a Sloth. The Sloth is protected. This whole meta, can, there's no strikers, like I said. As long as you protect that Sloth uh, with uh, the effects, with attack boost effects or Gizmek, and negate that, you just win. Like, there's no other way around it. And going second, you even keep the Sloth in because you clear the board and drop a Sloth and you win. So you don't got to play cards like the Strudel that can brick you. Or Tempest, they brick you. Field Spells, they brick you. Cards like these are not good because they don't do anything for you. I don't want no bricks in the deck whatsoever. The only cards I don't like seeing uh, whatsoever are these. But even then, they're, I don't mind seeing them. They're scales. Big deal. Protects your scales. Scales. It, it, it's not a big deal to see them whatsoever. And it's like I said, just the most consistent list going first or second. So you don't want to throw in bricks that are just not required uh, for your combo. I understand other decks need to play Destrudo because they revolve around Absolute and stuff. But this deck does not. So you don't need to risk that brick. Next, 10 draw cards. I cannot fathom anyone on this planet who plays less less than these. Uh, and So one upstart, three into the void. So you have four upstarts, three allure, and then three desires. You must play this ratio. It's not debatable, okay? You're not playing some deck that's like... It's not because of the draws. It's the fact that they're free counters, okay? If you're going to resolve the best cards in your deck, which are Servant and Abductor, as many times as you want, one each per turn normally, you're going to need to play all these spells, right? Like, it's not debatable. Plus, Curtain Razor and Chronograph also spells. So you play 22 spells. If you do the math there, you have a 5... Per, uh, I think it was 6.5% chance or something like that of, of not being able to resolve a Servant or Abductor turn one, which is an insane number. Uh, I know, Triff Math. I did the number. I forgot what it was. I did math to fix it, make this deck. But the deck's amazing. And math tells you to play three desires. A lot of you don't want to play. Even in a 10, in a 30 card deck, you're playing a 30 card deck. You're going to see mass, a servant every single turn. You see all your power cards. You're playing a damn 30 card deck. It's a 40 card deck with 10 draw cards. So it, it's so damn consistent. I can't even begin to explain. Even the worst hand is the best hand. I can show you guys 20 hands in a row. And they're all broken. Like the deck's absolutely insane. Like I said, the only time you're ever going to lose is if you don't know what to negate against certain decks. I don't know how the hell to play against Cyber Dragons, so I'm negating some random stuff that doesn't even matter, and then you clear my board, and so you learn from that, right? <clears throat> you learn from that, you learn from your mistakes, and move on. Uh, after London, I figured out I have to give respect to all the shit decks, sub-terror, stuff like that, and I learned them. I mean, I was, you are banned for a year, I was banned for a year, or you guys might not test as much, so you're going to have to put in the work to test against all the bad decks in order to beat it. And if you do, and if you play perfectly, this deck's absolutely unbeatable, and testing online right now, or testing at locals, I just I just came back fresh from my locals right now, undefeated, 4-0. Like, I have a whole vlog of it, I'll be posting it soon. The deck's insane, thing as right now. As long as you don't misplay, the deck's absolutely wild. Now for the extra deck. Electrum, LP, B-Cop. B-Cop could be a, a IP Mascarena, but Mascarena has no place with the, L, with the LP slot sitting there. So you can't summon it after any uh, the card of Mascarena. Like, you can't summon a Unicorn anyways after. So I, I took it out. B-Cop, uh, you get to use with a Saryuja sometimes. So sometimes it's relevant. Uh, one Triple Burst. <clears throat> one Saryuja. One Appaloosa. All these part of the combo. A lot of the time when they summon Phantasmate first, you need to summon a Saryuja instead of the Appaloosa to ensure that your slot is going to get the 300 attack boost to ensure that the slot always overkills your opponent. So there's a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of stu sl little stuff like that in the game, that uh, in this meta, that are really important. Uh, what are you going to do when they phantasm me? Slot's going to get killed, right? So so you just a way to do it, or Gizmek as well. It's another way, but uh, it's, it's, it's small stuff like that do come up, especially with a lot of people maining three, uh, three phantasm Uh Also, a lot of times, if you're a short one spell, so you usually gets it. <clears throat> Next, one Appalooza, the combo rolls around it. Next, is your backup option if Sloth gets banished. Uh, one Seal, one Pisty, so this is a proxy. There is a combo I'm going to show you guys right now. I'll show you guys the main combo at the very end, but uh, a quick combo is your backup combo I'm going to show you guys. So, uh, you do your normal board with Dark Worm, etc. I'll put it up for you guys right now, quickly. Uh, it's it's not the best board, but it, it's the backup board, okay? So, you have your typical board here. You have your Jackal, your, maybe you have a Mighty Master, uh, Electrum, Dark Worm, and two random monsters. So, this is very typical. You're going to have something like this. Let's say you're... Let's say very typical. Extremely typical. Now, you're going to assume that your... Uh, Sloth is banished, and you don't want to play a brick in Distrudo just because you don't need it for your end board. Your end board doesn't use the Distrudo. Going first, you're not summoning the Distrudo. If anything, I'll play for going second, but why would you play the Distrudo going second when you can just put in side cards instead? <clears throat> so the backup combo, I'll show the main combo. I'll show the main combo first, actually. So the first combo is uh, 
it's so easy. So this is your typical board after the pendulum summoning, right? With counters on the on Jackal and Mighty Master. So the first board, as simple as it gets. Like, this is even an, uh, easy to do for any noob as well. You just link summon those three for Appalooza. Uh, if I can find my Appalooza, into Appalooza. And you link this into LP, and then you summon out Sloth. So as you see, it, it's very simple. There's not much stuff needed to do, but it, it's the auto win versus this entire meta. If they summon Phantasma first, you go Saryuja. And you have all the negates needed for an auto win. You're not facing strikers. Or after siding, you're going to have a Morphage Luckery to protect the slot. But that's the main combo. Alright. Now, the if you banish the slot. Or if you're, you know you're facing a trap deck. Also, game one. Sometimes I put in two Mighty Master. And I end up Appalooza before my pen summon. But we'll get to that later. In terms of more advanced combos. So, now if you banish for the, the same hand. If you banish the uh, slot. What you do now is you go LP. You go triple burst. It's important to go triple burst instead of Saryuja here. So you go triple burst. LP. Special, a random dark one from your deck. Alright. Next, you go uh, in, with triple burst and the LP, you go into Saryuja. So, while well, talking to Paul Cooper as well at London, what he does, because he plays Secret Village, that's out to Super Poly. You want to make sure Super Poly is useless. So I play slots for that. What he does is he links away for four cards... Uh, as you see in this video, I'm going to uh, go check out Coopstar Cards, is his, his new channel. Go check out his channel right now. Uh, what he does is he links four cards for Sayuja to draw into the Secret Village. So there's nothing I care to draw into aside from another negate. So I don't need to draw four. So what he does is he does uh, draw four, get Secret Village, drops it down and wins. You're not always going to see it. So I'm not a fan of, of searching for, uh, of digging with Sayuja to get the Secret Village. He's not always guaranteed it and it bricks you. So what I prefer instead is a backup. Sloth is by far better than all this. But this is if you banish the Sloth as a backup. Uh, so what I do is link those two into Sayuja. No effect from Sayuja, just keep it there. And then with the Dark Worm, you go into Pisty. Uh, he has plays with Pisty as well, uh, which go check out his channel for his combos with it. Uh, where's my Pisty? So over here, this will be the Pisty. Pisty, now special out the Triple Burst. And now the Pisty and the Sayuja go into Seal. And the... Triple Burst and the Abductor go into an Appalooza for two. Uh, even though Appalooza for two does seem kind of weak, this is just the backup board in case your main board get a uh, slot, main card gets banished. So your board would be this as a backup. And the thing I like about this is if they were to force the attack into the Appalooza, it has two counters, you're just going to bounce it with the seal. So now you still have the two negates you can get from this and the bounce. So there's still five interruptions, and uh, this will resolve at two. But it's more the sloth is just is still better because you can still poly these. And sometimes if you know you you don't have it, you don't want to get cucked by poly. If you know he plays poly, sometimes I'm not even gonna summon the mighty master. Or if you have the extra level seven, you're gonna go into absolute first and get a vortex. That way they're gonna have no you're gonna have no dark on the field. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go into that's the extra deck. Uh, we do have a few other cards in the extra deck. I believe we have a one dweller because auto win versus orcas, one absolute one vortex. This is also just backup. You don't use it. Or going second. A lot of times it comes up for the bounce. And then Phoenix, Unicorn, two Boral cards. You guys do need to play these. Uh, a lot of players don't play the Nightmares. I don't know why it's so damn powerful. You need both Borals for matchups. Uh, Thunder Dragon, you need Boral look for. Alright, next on the side deck. Two Dark Ruler. Two Mind Control. Two System Down. Uh, two Sphere Mode. Okay, what this... And what, one Down and Wrestler. What this covers... Uh, it is the entire combo meta right now. You could put in four of these versus any combo deck. And because you play 10 draw cards, you play 30 card deck, you never want to put side in more than four, maybe five. You're playing Pendulum, no discard outlets. You're playing a 30 card deck. You're going to see them all the time. You're going to see more than you want even. This really covers the entire meta in terms of which four you want in here. Also, this is going second. Also, against Thunder, you got the one Aether. You don't main deck the Aether, but the Aether's there. Some decks just die to Aether, uh, aka Thunder. So if you literally just put in, like, even this is too much for Thunder. I would put in, I don't even like siding Dark Ruler against Thunder because you can't kill, kill them. They suck. Thunder's the freest matchup in the world. You could side in whatever you want. Maybe one Mind Control because it's super, the other's common. Screw that. So you put in two Dark Roller, one Mind Control, one Aether, and you win. Uh, whatever you want, whatever ratio you want, or just all five to kill them even more. But every deck has a great ratio for this. Versus Orcus, you're going to have uh, two mind control, two system down, and that's more than enough to beat them. Uh, draw one, you win. You don't even need to see them. All the decks, uh, uh, it's just really good. All the, it, it's great against every every meta right now and all good combo decks. You can th throw in any ratio you want in there. Two reboot, two Denko, uh, one Dino Wrestler for back row. Whatever ratio you want, I'll put in four or five, sometimes all five of them if I feel like it. And uh, one Lechery, 
I, I do think I'm going to take a one sphere mode or one mind control for a, a, uh, a second sloth. Because sometimes Sloth is just such a great card that if you get banished, you just you don't want to lose like that. So sometimes Sloth is such an auto win that I might even put in a Sloth for a second sphere mode. So put in one Sloth, one Lechery, and sign them in and just auto win. That's a deck, guys. This is absolutely insane. And she has a combo everything. If there's any questions, let me know. And I'm going to let you guys know again. Shameless plug. Go check out my beautiful mat. If you guys are interested, link in the description below. Message me on Facebook or Instagram and we'll get it up for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.